It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Mattis writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1763, recorded Thursday, January 23rd, 2019. CES crud. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have another five gadgets from CES. Dick and I are a little bit under the weather, but that doesn't mean our show is any less amazing. All next on The Gizwiz! It's the Sandum Show with Dickie D and OMG Chat on your PC. It's time for The Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for The Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And here he is. Your lead pathogen for gadgets. How are you doing, Dickie D? <laughs> I'm doing uh, fine. Oh gosh, no. me too. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing okay. I, I, I'm. I'm better. I was uh, in a disaster mode a few days ago, but I am recovering. And I came home from CES fine, and then like four days later, I crashed. You came home fine, but you went to a different convention, right? Yes. Because. You were so, feeling too healthy. <laughs> exactly. I thought, you know what? I got away from Vegas nice and healthy and not sick. Let's just go to another convention to, <laughs> to roll so the dice go? once again. I went to PAX South, so in San Antonio. And it's, it, that's one of my favorite. It's a gaming convention. Everything to do with games, board games, tabletop games, uh, video games, uh, mobile games. I mean, just everything. And... Um, I love going to it because it's in San Antonio and I can just drive down there. So it's super great to go to uh, for me. Uh, but yeah, last day of PAX South, I woke up and I could just tell something. I had caught something. I feel like it's a, uh, it's like an ongoing joke. You know, you go to a convention, you get a cold, you get something. I have, I have the flu. Um, but yeah, you have the official flu. Yeah. So I went, I'm... I wanted to get better fast, so I decided to spend the bucks and go to a urgent care and get diagnosed so I could get some prescriptions to start fighting this thing. Of course, it's the flu, so it's a virus, so there's not a ton of stuff you can do. There is, um, what do they call that stuff? Uh, uh, oh, Terraflu? Terraflu, there you go. Terraflu, yeah. Yeah, it's like the closest thing that you could really do for something like that. So yeah, I, got, I went to get that prescription and... Um, uh, so yeah, they do a quick check. It's a very. I know we had that. Yes, it's amazing. Um, it takes like thirty seconds. Yeah, um, I think you just they just swab your mouth, right? Yeah, they swab my nose, oh, which is nose. funny. Okay, because Brian Brushwood used to do a nail in the nose trick, and right. he would teach people like, here's how it works. Like your nose cavity goes straight back, <laughs> like. You could do that. And so, like, they're about ready to put the thing in. And I'm like, <laughs> I know exactly. Like, I know exactly what's going to happen. And so, yeah, they, they swabbed my nose on both sides. Um, yeah, Tamiflu. That's right. Tamiflu. The Tamiflu. chat room is correcting me. But, yeah, I couldn't. I, they swabbed my nose. And, like, two seconds later, the doctor's back. Yeah, you have influenza B. I'm like, I, I literally asked, like, from the test? I was like, you, you made sure to run the test, right? Because that was way too fast. I really wanted to know. Uh, once and for all, do, do I really have the flu? And yeah, she was like, oh yeah, from the test. Um, oh well, that's my amazing. gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. Is, is B what's currently going around? Or, or could they say you have B, C, or D, or E, or F? Or, uh, <laughs> from Googling, it looks like influenza A and influenza B are the two different types. Influenza B is apparently not as severe Oh. From what my Googles, you know, I'm obviously <laughs> take, the, take take all this information with a grain of salt. But yeah, so apparently it's it's not as bad. And I did. I got a flu flu shot. Nick with the C is asking, did I get a flu shot? I 100% got a flu shot back in the uh, fall. Um, I don't know if I needed to get a booster, but I no. Yeah. I heard the flu shot is like 60% effective, mm -hmm. something like that. It's never 100% because I think there are so many variations of the flu right. that right. you're better off having the flu shot than not, but it's not like 100%. Yep, 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 yep. 
and I was very lucky that I, I, I was lucky that I was motivated to get better because he, um, Scooter X is saying it works best if, for first 48 hours or within 48 hours. It was like exactly 48 hours of me coming down with it that I was like, I'm going to kick this thing's butt. Let's just get it over yeah. with. That was on Tuesday that I went into the doctor. It's Thursday now. So we've had a, a full day of recovery and about half a day of recovery. So I'm an, okay. at least able to stand. Which is, which is good. <laughs> and you're on your way to yet another convention someplace. Another thing, a secret project. Not a a secret talk about project, this one. okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm leaving quite soon to do that as well. So that's another reason I was like, got to get better. I got to oh get better. Gosh, I'm yes. chugging Gatorade. I'm on every <laughs> over-the-counter drug that I can take. Um, you know, I decided to throw in some extra, you know, Lotrimin. Why not? You know, let's just try Why, it. yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm on every over-the-counter drug and uh, trying to get better. So yeah, very good. All right, and well, you're, you're staying healthy too. Don't... Yeah, well, I'm. Good. I'm trying. I'm trying. Fortunately, <laughs> we did all of our work in Vegas. Yeah. So we can sit back and show them and then uh, talk about them. So why don't we jump in? I think you have the first. Yeah, this first is a really interesting look at some transportation with some sort of modular design. So let's jump in. Hey, so it's Chad here at CES and I'm here with Zach and we're taking a look at cake. And tell me what I'm looking at here. There, I see one over here on the table and one in front of me. What are we looking at? Yeah, so you're looking at uh, electric motorbikes. So uh, the brand name is Cake. We manufacture and sell lightweight electric motorcycles. The two models you see here are utility commuter style. And the one, the lower one here, both models are called the Osa. This is the Osa Lite, and that one's the Osa Plus. So the Osa Lite is scooter style, so it'll go 30 miles an hour. The Osa Plus, you do need a motorcycle license for, it goes 65 miles an hour. Gotcha, so, yeah. I th so that's really convenient that you wouldn't need any type of extra licensing Correct. to get just the Osa, because yeah. it only goes 30 miles an hour. And that, is that the only really restriction around that? On this bike it is, you know, it comes with a little bit different suspension. It's a bit more robust on the Osa Plus, but aside from that, the two, the two bikes are very similar. And there's no, it, whenever you buy one, you can't like upgrade later. There's no like post. Correct, not, not currently. Uh, but with our development, you know, down the road as we come out with new technology, better batteries, things like that, the, the idea is that you will be able to upgrade. We just can't offer that right now. Sounds good. Yeah. Now, I'm, and I'm seeing between the two models here, one has sort of like a cage yeah. on the back, like a trunk almost, and, some, and this one has like an extra seat, and that looks very modular and yeah. changeable. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the bike is extremely modular. So the, the whole design around this, it's, it's very simple. You know, we want it to be lightweight, clean, and, and simple. And so you notice the bar design here, it's very straight, very rigid. If you think of the workbench, that's essentially the nickname we have for the bike. You know, you think of your workbench, you've got all your tools on it, you, you bring with you, carry with you what you need. And we didn't want people, you know, their passion in commuting on two wheels to be limited by what they could carry. So everything's, as we said, modular on the bike. Uh, for example, you see this clamp system right here. This is exactly how the seat attaches. So it pops right off. It, if the seat were on, you know, move it forward and back. Same with the passenger seat. We have a ton of different attachments. You see the basket on that model over there. We've got surfboard racks, ski racks, uh, snowboard rack, whatever it is. You know, we don't want this bike to limit what you can bring. Uh, and the other unique thing too is we have onboard charging as well. So if you've got camera equipment, uh, if you've got battery powered tools, whatever it may be, you can charge them right through this as well. And it's a standard like 12 volt out on the front here. Right, at exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And then how would you uh, charge this like if you're at home? Yeah, if you're at home, so you know, the bike ships with the charger. Uh, you can charge it at 110 volt, you know, standard house outlet. Charge time from full dead to full charge is two and a half hours, and ride time on average is about three hours. What's the uh, uh, about price point that you're aiming for? On this model, on the scooter style, uh, $6,500. When you go to the full street legal motorcycle, $8,500. And are you guys available now, or is this a future product? We are available now. So we have two other models that we're shipping. The two that you see here, the OSA, we're taking orders now and we'll be delivering in March. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Cool. So, it's, it's funny, it's, I almost forgot that it's a fully electric bike. That almost seems like everyone's coming out with a fully electric something nowadays. It's like, oh yeah, it's also fully electric. Forgot about that. Um, but yeah, so it's just a, a pretty like modular, utilitarian electric bike. They have, I didn't realize that Cake has so many different sort of models like boy you know i didn't realize that either i yeah. think the two new ones are the ones that they, they call like the workshop thing because yeah i believe about the the two at the top they said that there are a thousand possible combinations of things you could slide on and off uh yeah. so that you can customize it also I, I guess it was only for the show i thought it was very funny that the two seats say on them do not sit <laughs> did you notice? No. <laughs> yes. I did not notice it's, that. Each seat says do not sit. So I said maybe <laughs> they they put that on there so people at, in the show wouldn't get on them or something. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, oh yeah, like this one's that that one is uh, equipped for luggage uh, for baggage and Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it it had this very unique look. It was almost hard to come across on video, but the, all of these little like bits like the lamp and the screen they all had you know wires and stuff it really made it look like uh, almost like uh from space like space agency sort of style stuff i know this isn't the best view here because it keeps getting cut off but it was very interesting and i saw him rip off a seat and add you know a new one and it all looked very very nice it was pretty cool yeah. Now I, I I've never bought an electric scooter. It is uh what was it? 6500? Yeah, 6500 yeah. for the smaller one. Right. 8500 for the larger one. Um yeah, I don't know now, either because Yeah. How much would a normal I mean it's, I mean it seems expensive. <laughs> but yeah. like an actual motorcycle Oh, that, oh, then it's they're really uh, compared to a motorcycle. That seems very cheap. I think yeah. the motorcycle one that they had was uh, seventy-five or eighty-five hundred. I don't yeah. know. I think in the city, though. I think in New York City, I think electric scooters are limited to eighteen miles an hour. Oh. So, I I don't know since that has big tires and stuff whether or not yeah it falls under that or not. But if you're gonna buy one, check with your local laws. Yes, exactly. Um, and then, I mean, I had even no idea to even look for something like this. So this is just kind of a cool jumping off spot just to get, start your research, start looking at something like this. Cake yeah. is the company ridecake.com where you can find out more. This was the OSA Lite and the OSA Plus. Right. And they're, I believe they are a Swedish company. So right. It looks that's where they're from. It looks, um, it looks like it's from Ikea, at least. Yeah, it does. Uh. It does look like it is, yeah. <laughs> and it comes with, it's $1,800, it's $7,500, $6,500, and an extra $10 for the little hex key <laughs> right. that attaches every single thing. If you to needed them. the Allen wrench, it costs an extra <laughs> yeah. five bucks. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, moving on uh, to uh, something from Lenovo. They say it is the first foldable full PC. We've seen foldable tablets, but now a foldable PC, and this is it. Okay, we're at Lenovo, and Haley, Haley, a lot of people said go to Lenovo. They have a new tablet. Yeah. Uh, is this it? But it's not a tablet. A little bit more than just a tablet. So this is actually the world's first folding PC. Wow. Can you do that more than once? Uh, yes, you can do that many times. <laughs> yeah, so this is our ThinkPad X1 Fold, and it will be available mid-2020 at a starting price of $24.99. Now, what size is that screen? So this is a 13.3-inch 2K OLED display. So that's a plastic OLED, and we've worked in partnership with LG Display on this. Oh, okay. Very good. So that's something people should be familiar with. Now, what kind of, do we have stereo speakers or speakers? Yeah, so this actually has Dolby Audio, and you have four uh, Farfield Michael mics as well. 
So that way you have a full audio visual experience. If you're doing conference calls, if you're listening um, to a video, whatever it might be. So then we have a camera in here too. You do. So right here, you do have a camera. Again, if you want to do conferencing, you're all set. All right. And uh, mid-year. Mid-year. Okay. You know what? Can you hold my mic because I have to fold it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you promise to give it back to me. Any, any hints to folding it? There's no hints. There's no hints. So this articulates here, I, I feel, the leather cover. Yeah, um, I feel the leather yeah cover but moving. it really, what do you think? I like this. You know what, can you have, actually you, you can't divide it and have two. You absolutely can. You can, okay. You, you absolutely can. So I can show that to you as well. So if we look here, you can see that we are able to have two different things on the display and fold that. Um, if you want to use it in a different mode, you can actually turn this and then have the option for the on-screen display. So we have a mode switcher here, so you can choose between a single, dual, or just working on one thing with the on-screen display. So, uh, sorry, with the on-screen keyboard. So you'll see that here. I'm just going to select this Word document. That is, that is yeah. really but neat. Something that's really special here is the fact that you can actually work within the fold. So unlike a dual display where you're going to have that line and you lose really valuable real estate, this can actually scroll through. I can use it as a full portrait mode. And then when I step onto the train, whatever it may be, and I need a little bit less space, um, I'm able to continue working. That is great. And the price again will be about? $24.99. 24 $24.99 mid-year. That, that is real. That was worth coming over for. I'm so glad. <laughs> Ellie, thank you so much. My okay, pleasure. bye. So that is awesome to see. I'm loving, we've seen a few foldable things, like you mentioned before. We've seen like a few phones. Um, a tablet, but this is, is a tablet that could be really a computer, so much more, and it's a way bigger form factor than I've seen on any. No, absolutely, else. absolutely, and I and I do love the fact that the seam uh, you can have writing right across the seam, and it'll it'll be easy and clear to read it because right. the seam. The there seam is, is no seamless. Break. Yeah, it, yeah, it is yeah. seamless because it's all screen. That screen is bendable, so that you never have a break. It's pretty magical to see. It's it's like Star Trek level. Like, oh man, this is this is what the future is like. Yeah, very, now, very on, cool. On their website, uh, uh, scroll down again, Chad. On their website, I'm not sure if it's included in the price. It says there's also hmm. a Bluetooth external keyboard oh, yeah, oh, that yeah. stores inside the cover huh. and charges while it's inside the cover. Well, so that, that is very interesting. I, I, since it's and that part cover of the cover was really neat. You kind of mentioned it. It, it had, I assume it's using magnets or something. It's, ma it's using magnets. When it's open, the leather matches the edge, but when it's closed, because that curve adds extra surface area, it has to shift over. So you get a little bit of a gap on the top, but it really nicely does it for you so that you have, um, you can close it or have it opened and there's, there's no issue with that leather cover on the back. Very cool. Yeah, and and my guess is that that slit may be where the keyboard slides in. Yeah, that could be. And it said that the keyboard is magnetic too, and I think the magnets that help uh, the unit holds the keyboard in place and uh, also can charge. And as she said, mid year twenty four ninety nine, and then uh, toward the fall, there's going to be I don't even know about Windows and a Windows X version. Do you know about Windows X? Uh, I think that, is that their arm based? I think it's a slower no, version I of Windows. No, I think, I think that's Windows S. That is Windows, Windows S is the, the safe, slow, like. Yeah, yeah, yes, right. Or speedy right. This, this, is what it stands for. Yeah, well anyway, thought, uh, it says Windows X is coming out at a later date. Interesting, interesting. Whatever that Yeah, is. Windows S is like a 
you have to buy everything through the Windows Store so that everything will run fast. It'll boom yes, quicker. and you, and you can have Chrome. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the, you remember that little PC I showed a couple months ago, the two hundred and sixty nine dollar PC. Yeah, the the yep. itty bitty one. Yeah, uh, that yes. that runs Windows S. Yes. A and I, I haven't done it yet, but there's evidently a way you can go in and turn off Windows S. Yeah. And and it just turns into regular Windows. Right. And it says warning. You cannot You're go slowing back. slowing down everything. I even heard yes, I yes. thought that you could turn it off, download what you want. So download Chrome install and then turn it back on is what i thought oh, okay. you could now, do the thing i i i saw said uh make sure you want to do it because you can't go back to s but what you're uh, saying makes way more uh, sense that you could that's download what i heard but what, i yeah. haven't seen it done yeah. um and then uh it looks like nick with a c is giving us this article windows 10x versus windows 10 what is the difference oh it, 10x is for dual displays ah uh, Oh, uh, and flexible okay. devices. Oh, okay. Oh, they made a whole version of Windows just for flexible. This article does have a whole bunch of dual display stuff and no digital oh, okay. trends. Please don't send me. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So that makes sense. I'm surprised they made a whole <laughs> yeah. new Windows for that. Uh, yeah, so am I. So maybe like only half your screen could get hacked. Yeah. So, you know what? Someone hacked the right side of my Windows X, <laughs> but fortunately it didn't affect the left side of my Windows X. This is fantastic. So when they deprecate it, you'll never get new updates. <laughs> Why build it into normal Windows when you could have a whole new Windows version oh, for God. this? Seems silly. Um, um, all right, I guess we we'll go right. back to you. Yes, back to me. Let's see, what are we looking at? We are going to take a look at our good friends, Anchor. We love Anchor. So let's uh, jump over and see what they have for us. Hey, Chad here, and we are at CES with Anchor. You know Anchor. We love Anchor. How's it doing? How's it going? I'm with Aaron. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm good. How are you? Awesome. So we saw this little guy. Yeah. This is very unique. I haven't ever seen something like this before. So walk us through what this product is. So this is the first official M5 certified flash for iPhone 11, uh, which we were able to create. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's actually able to integrate natively with the camera app that's already on board the iPhone as well as third-party apps as well. So all you have to do is plug it into your iPhone 11 and you can make your pictures uh, brighter and higher quality. That's awesome. And so it has a lightning cable on one side and it's just plug and play. You just exactly. put it in the back of the iPhone and, or uh, the lightning cable on an iPhone and then take a normal photo as long as flash is turned on on that photo That's and right. then it works. That's right. And it also has its own um, internal battery as well, which recharges also with a lightning input. Uh, so you can use the very same charger that you use to charge your iPhone to charge your flash as well. And um, not that you'll be charging it that often because it actually lasts for over 2000 flashes. Um, uh, before you have to charge it, so. And yeah. it doesn't take any power from your phone? Uh, no, it does not. It has its own power. It uses its own battery. Yeah. Awesome. And then is it, does it have any other function? Uh, well, you can turn it on to have a more of a sustained light uh, for your photo or your video, you know, depending on what you want to create. If you just you need a do. flashlight, you uh, could use it as a flashlight. You totally could. I mean, go for it, you know, if you, if you want to. Um, it also does come with a diffuser as well in case you need to t uh, tone the light down a bit. Uh, for your use case. Fantastic. What is its price point? $49.99. And when is it available? It'll be available on Amazon this week. And where can people find out more? Like what website should they go to? You can go to anchor.com to find out more about this and everything else that we're featuring at CES. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we didn't actually demonstrate it, but it's really just plug and play is you throw the lightning cable at the bottom of it, make sure that your flash is on on your uh, phone, click to take a photo, and it flashes just like your normal flash. And it your normal flash will go off, and this will go off at the same time. So it's really cool. Um, I played around with it a little bit right after we shot that. It's neat, especially if you're into photography, to add a little bit of extra, um, you know, extra dimension to a, a photo. My biggest downside with it is that it doesn't really have any options to edit color temperature, 
intensity, really any of those things. I couldn't, you know, there was no way to change how much light. So if you wanted to change that, you'd have to like physically move it further away. Um, but yeah, it was pretty neat. I liked it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I talked about this with Leo. It also comes a little carry pouch. Right. And Leo said it was the only flash that actually went off in sync with the shutter. Right. Uh, uh, on the, but it's only for the 11 and the 11 Pro, ah. according to, to their press release. So keep that in mind. Yeah. And I, I did look on Amazon. And uh, although you can order it now, it's not shipping till, I believe, the 25th. Oh, just, just uh, oh, actually, it's just going to be a couple of days from now when you can get it. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, and and he said, uh, he said two thousand shots. The press release on the website says yeah. uh, ten thousand shots on a full charge. Yeah, that's cut off, but that says ten thousand. I'm trying. Yeah. To... There it goes ten thousand. <laughs> there you like, go. What number there is that? <laughs> and you're right. You can use it as a flashlight. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty neat. It's it's very. Dedicated. You have to have an iPhone 11 or iPhone 11 Plus, and you have to be in a situation where you really want that flash to go off the moment that your photo is taken. But it's there. Um, and you have to have 49.99. Yeah, exactly. Um, Okie dokie. Okay, on. so now um, this is kind of interesting. A way to find people without using your phone, a GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. And this is it. Oh my gosh, locate anyone or anything for miles without phones, networks, or infrastructure. I, we need that because I already lost Chad and he was just standing here a minute ago. So, is it Kath, Katrina? Uh, Karina. Karina. Karina, what is this? So, Link is a people compass. A people? A people compass. A people compass? Yes. Okay. So you connect two or more together and then you find each other anywhere in the world for miles without any infrastructure. So you don't need cell phones, uh, networks, any infrastructure, any subscriptions. And uh, the device gives you the direction and distance to the other people in your group. Well, how do you tell it what people you want to follow? So uh, you pair them. So it's 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 for groups of people that go out. Let's well, can say you show us on the on the. Gadget? Of course, yeah. So let's say you and I go out for a hike somewhere. Uh, we connect the two devices together, and then uh, we are inside. So you are picking up GPS here. So we are in demo mode, and it's showing you the direction and the distance. So for example, Dave is 50 feet that way. Um, now, how did the names get in there? Is there a little keyboard? Yes. So it's actually, uh, I'm glad you asked. We have a one button. Um, um, Alphabet keyboard. Yes. So you just like tilt the, the, uh, the device and then you select the letters. And then after you name it, you pair them together. So let's say you and I are just a group of two, uh, but you can have groups of up to 12 people. You connect them uh, all at once. And then from that point on, the devices are communicating with each other in like a private network, which is very secure. And the person has nothing on them. The person, the person has the other device. So I have one, you have one, he has Oh, every one of us has yes. one. And then we're referencing each other through our device. So um, the network is relaying the um, GPS coordinates from one device to the other ones. And, and over how long a distance? So typically uh, three miles. We three do, miles. We uh, do six miles on the beach, 20 miles in the air. It really depends on topography, but uh, the majority of times it's going to be like around three okay. miles. Okay. Now, could be miles. Okay. Now, uh, Josh, our producer's here. Could I see the name Josh and and wish that he was two miles away? Would it push him away? Doesn't do it that. Doesn't do that. It doesn't do that. Uh, People so, ask. You know, like, okay. Who's my wife? <laughs> now is Link out? You know, like we are uh, available commercially today. Today is the launch. We uh, sold 1.7 million in just two months. And now we're launching uh, e-commerce as of a couple of hours ago on our website. And what does it retail for? So 249. 24. 249. 249. And then uh, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. So typically people buy four or five uh, family pack. And your website? Linkme.com. Linkme.com. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. See if you can find me now, Link. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is pretty cool that 
it doesn't require any other, uh, what's the word, uh, structure, uh, infrastructure. It doesn't require any other systems, just itself and another of itself. So you only need two to be able to track each other. Um, kind of cool. But, but the, the funny thing is, is when I first saw it and she said, find anybody, any, anywhere in the world. And I'm thinking <laughs> like, mm. so Chad's in Italy and yes. I'm in Brooklyn and it goes, oh, it says Chad is 5,890 <laughs> miles away in this direction. Uh, so it's within a three mile radius that you can find each other. Um, and it, as, as in, in looking through the, the rest of the PR stuff, you could hang it on the dog. You can do, you can uh, make a geo area where you're telling everybody, let's not go uh, outside of a half mile radius and it'll alert you when someone's gone outside that area. So it does a few more uh, other things, but it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, do, I wish that it was a little less expensive. Um, 250 bucks for two of them is a little bit expensive, but, uh, I don't really see any, anyone else in this area in this sort of yeah, do, doing device. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so you can see a lot of people would probably get a few, especially if you have a family. How yeah. much is five? Five is around 600. That's 580. So dollars. it's still expensive. It's like 110 yeah. Yeah, more than about one hundred and fifteen dollars a, a unit. Yeah, yeah one hundred fifteen. Yeah, it's uh, not cheap, but the nice thing is that there's no monthly cost. A lot of the other GPS tracking systems, where you click a button and someone comes to you, those are have service fees or are even more expensive, um, and you get the peace of mind that you can use this globally, and if there's no infrastructure around, if there's no self-service or anything, it's kind of cool. Yeah. There you go. Link, link, link me. L Y N Q. K. L Y N Q. There we go. Um, and our final guy is you. Final gadget is, uh, this is a little thing I saw as a retrofit for a vehicle, which I thought was cool for safety and just a cool gadget as well. So here we go. Hey, Chad here at CES 2020. So I'm here with Augustin. Yes, and sir. tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here on the table. All right, so here we have our retrofit motorcycle blind spot detection system. This can be fitted to any motorcycle as long as it's 12 volts. So that's pretty much any modern bike. It mounts at the license plate, so it's easy to install. Installation takes between 45 minutes to maybe two hours. We also have our uh, RV blind spot detection system. This fits motorhomes and trailers. Uh, we are the world's first trailer blind spot detection system. Uh, we're quite proud of that as well. Uh, we also do blind spot detection for trucks with a taillight replacement. And we do passenger car where it's a retrofit with an in bumper sensor. That's awesome. And you were also telling me before that you could also do commercial vehicles, sort of like larger buses, like actual school buses and that sort of thing. Um, so when it comes to like, say the tail light replacement that you were talking about before, that's just an at home user replaceable feature? Absolutely, so you just pop out the tail light, put in the new one, we have a plug and play harness. Uh, it all just gets zip tied together and you plug it into the OBD2 port. It's about a 45 minute install for most people. So you mentioned OBD2 port, so that'll notice when you turn on the blinker and like all those sorts of things? Right, we make it application specific, so it tells you about the blinker information, how fast the vehicle's moving, whether the vehicle's powered up or not, and we get the power from the OBD port as well. That's awesome, and then how does, uh, let's say there's a blind spot, spot warning, how does the system let you know that something's going wrong? So we have indicators that go into A-pillar, so they're very uh, OEM looking, and they snap right in, we provide the tools and everything, um, so that'll flash or stay solid depending on which state of warning you're getting. That's awesome. The, so this entire system, like depending on which car you have, would add complete blind spot detection. Does it add anything else on top of blind spot detection or is it just blind spot detection? We also do rear cross traffic alert. So as you're backing out, if somebody's coming from the side, it'll also warn you of that traffic as well. And uh, I know there's a whole bunch of different products that we're looking at. So could you give us a rundown of about what cost each of those would be? Sure, our retrofit for our passenger vehicles is $599 retail. 
our truck system and motorcycle system is $7.99 retail. Our commercial vehicle, motorhome, and trailer systems are $9.99 retail. Thank you. And all, is all of that available on the market now or in the future? It's all available now on our website, buyblindspot.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks. I love their website, Buy Bl Blind Spot. Like, bye bye. Don't need to see you anymore. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I was wondering when, when he said buy blind spots. I was going to say, why would someone want to buy a blind spot? Exactly. Um, it, do you want to see where you're going? The actual website that we found was rvblindspot.com, but I'm sure they have a whole bunch. But uh, uh, this is it. So C Cub is sort of their brand. But yeah, I just really thought that that was neat. It's a nice um, retrofit to fit onto a whole bunch of different things to make sure that you are having blind spot detection. I have blind spot detection on my Tesla and it is awesome. It is really, really, really good. So I suggest this, especially if you have a big trailer where it's harder to gauge exactly where the traffic is on the side of you. This is great. And I love that it works with your car. You plug it in the OBD2 port. It'll tell you know all the information about your car while it's going on. It's a little pricey, but that was cool. Yeah, and you get a visual indication and audio alarms uh, when you're nearing something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I liked it a lot. I don't think that would work on my boat, but I'm not sure. Oh, I was like, yeah. get, get near the dock. Yeah, I'm not I don't sure. Know about I'm not that. sure. How how often do do you use the blinker on your boat? You know, <laughs> turn on that signal. Well, first I'd have to install one, and yeah, then. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I guess that that's not a gadget for me. There you go. No, yeah. also it's so funny. We're both a little bit under the weather, and sometimes I was watching that that video, and I'm thinking, this is like like someone watching a, a young kid say, look at that young whippersnapper doing that interview. Look at him, look at him answering those questions. I felt that way. I, earlier when we were both kind of like, ah, how's it, how's it going? At the beginning of the episode, I was thinking this is like our 50th anniversary episode where we're both just like, oh man, age, holy moly. Yeah, I agree. Um, hey, we've come to the end of our show. I want to say a huge thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. That's where you can support the show. Thank you so much if you are a patron for supporting us. You guys support every single episode. You're fantastic and amazing and good looking too. Thank you so much for supporting the Gizwiz. You guys are awesome. If you enjoy the Gizwiz and want to give back, please consider supporting over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash gizwiz. That's where you can support if Patreon's not your deal, Patreon's a reoccurring payment, so some people don't want to do that. You can give via PayPal over at our website. Click on the Patreon tab there at the top, and there will be a PayPal link underneath the Patreon banner, and so you can support that way. If you're here on gizwiz.tv, that's our website. You can watch the show live just about every Thursday. We're live right now. There we are. Um, you can join the chat room and chat along. We're live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time. Next week, obviously, we're not going to be live because we're recording two today. Um, but if you missed the show, don't worry. All of our episodes are there on gizwiz.tv for you to watch and enjoy. Also, head on over to gizwiz.biz. That's Dickie D's website. He covers all of our gadgets and fantastic articles there on that site. If you want to play a fun little game while you're on the internet, head on over to gizwiz.biz and play What the Heck Is It? This is the game show that you can play along. This is bi-monthly, so we'll find out at the end of February what this gadget is. <clears throat> this is the whole gadget, and you have to you know just figure out what the heck this is. Uh, it's pretty obvious to me that uh, before Edison invented the plug, this was a this was a prototype plug. It's, it's really an old old gadget. If you think you know what this is, get a guess on over gizwiz.biz. There are six Mad Magazines for correct answers, but twelve Mad Magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. So get a guess on over at gizwiz.biz. Also, we didn't cover any videos in today's episode, but we'd love to see and hear from you in our gadget warehouse. We don't have one 
uh, this episode or next episode. But if you have a gadget that you love, you hate, you just want to tell people all about, please send it over. And all you have to do is record a quick video of yourself sh showing the gadget, talking about the gadget. If it could be in portrait mode, that'd be fantastic. Upload that to YouTube. If you want it to be a little bit private, hit the unlisted option. Make sure it's not private because then not even... Landscape mode. It. Yeah, landscape. Oh, did I say portrait? Yes, yeah. landscape, not portrait. Um, then send that link over to us. Mail at gizwiz.tv is the address. And uh, we'll probably show it on the Gizwiz. We'd love your videos. And if we show it, you get a Mad Magazine and one of those now 37 or 8-year-old Alfred E. Newman pictures. If you live in the U.S., if you live anywhere else in the world, I'll autograph one of those photos and send you a high-res image to print out wherever you are. That about wraps it up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. 